I think I'm, I think you can read that correctly now. All right. Okay. Um, hi guys. I'm Colleen. Um, I'm going to pull, uh oh, my phone up so I can see comments just in case. Um, hold on. Let me grab somebody into the group who wants in. Um, if you're on by chance, let me know you can see me. Let me know you can hear me. Um, give me two seconds to figure out. Um, okay, well, we'll see what we can do here. All right, um, buddy, come here, bud. Come on. So since listening to me go on and on for about an hour might not be super cute, I brought a friend. This is Buddy. He says hi. Can you say hi to the camera? No, not that way. Not that way, that way. Over that way. Up. Can you hop up? He says, no, I'll see you later. Um, so for my PDTs in the group, I'm getting my net time in. Come on. Hop up. Under. Thank you. Um, so I was asked by a trainer friend and then a really excited other trainer friend and then another trainer friend to come in and talk about uh, my default down protocol. Um, it's something that I developed kind of out of a need, um, and it's something that I have used since I developed it in every single case that I've worked, um, and I haven't had a dog that it hasn't helped yet, and um, hi Phyllis, hi Laura and Pringle, um, and it's really a really powerful thing, and it's not something that I've ever seen anybody else talk about. Um, it's something that I came up with on my own. I don't know if anybody else out there does it. It's a pretty simple concept, um, but it, like I said, I've never seen anybody else talk about it, and um, I work some pretty serious cases. Uh, I work the cases that other people won't work. I work the cases that um, are about to be rehomed or euthanized or um, are biting people or are um, making inappropriate choices. I know why I can't see comments now because the thing's still on the screen. Hold on. Did you just get off your boundary? Um, <laughs> yes, Lloyd, thank you for loving my default downs that I told you about on Instant Messenger. Um, hi, Kristen. Hi, Lena, because I know you're behind the screen with your mama. Um, come back up here. No. So this isn't a down. Um, this isn't a cue. This isn't something that I teach people how to teach their dogs in the sense of asking their dogs to do something. The power of this is it's about finally giving a dog a choice and giving them a communication tool. Hi, Alec. Um, because it's so important and it's been literally a game changer in all of the really difficult cases that I work. Um, because the dogs that have become difficult or exhibit difficult behaviors are quite often because those people that own them or work with them, they're not actually taking the time to listen to, not verbally, but what the dog is generally saying. Um, and that's how we get escalations into bites quite often. And so what this does is it gives the human side a very clear signal of, hey, I'm doing something that is making the dog nervous. And on the animal side, it finally gives them a really, really, I have a puppy sitting staring at me like, how can I get this? Come up here and show them. Come up, up here, yes. Yes, go up there and show. Go up there, show. Um, it gives the animal side finally a way that humans will pay attention to truly listening to what they're asking for. Um, <laughs> are you not gonna eat your food? Um, okay. So I, again, I'm checking my phone for comments, for questions, just because um, my screen's a little far away, so I can't read the screen because I'm kind of half blind. Um, <laughs> so I want to walk through, I know this is kind of a weird sounding title and it's not something that people kind of understand right away because it really, it's about the concept of it. Um, and I came up with it because in working all these really difficult cases, are you not going to eat? In working all my difficult cases that I work, I have came up with a situation where I'd walk into an owner's home and they would be so stressed out by how problematic or scary their dog's behavior had become or um, the dog also would be totally completely freaked out by a stranger coming into the house um, and this doesn't just apply to pet dogs and I'll go into that hopefully a little later 
Um, I'm going to try and stick to my hours. Everybody that knows me that's watching this knows I tend to be able to talk about this stuff for hours on end. And if somebody doesn't stop me, I won't stop. Um, but so for me, this was, I needed a way to go in and really get the conversation started with the owners and with the dogs. And when I'm working just with the dog, it's getting a conversation started with the dog. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go through first how I came about doing this because I think it's an important reasoning. Um, and I came about this by, I had a couple of years ago, just finished watching, um, Tom and Lauren over at Absolute Dogs watching their boundary game video and place work. Um, this is a boundary. This is him doing a boundary game. He's up on it for those of my pet owners that are watching and not other trainers. Um, obviously place work and boundaries and cots are nothing new to those of us who are in kind of the industry, but I find that owners don't understand how valuable they can be. And when I go into these kind of really difficult situations where the emotions are so high, I needed a way to really connect with both the dog and the human. So I watched this DVD and I was so impressed because they had a level of calmness out of these dogs on these boundaries that I just wanted to figure out how to implement in my cases. But it did require some training and some work and it required this object, this boundary, this cot. And I remember being really inspired to go through this training and to start applying it. And then I ended up um, having to go into a case with a dog that had already been surrendered to the shelter by an owner, reclaimed by an owner's, the owner's relative, and was just a hot mess. And I walked in the front door after just watching this DVD, and the dog was just all over the place. The owner was almost in tears. The, the owner was like, I, we can't control the dog. We can't control the energy. We can't do anything. We're, we're worried. We're, um, and so I just sat there and I went, okay. And the dog just didn't want anything to do with me, but at least focusing on me and capturing his brain, but wanted all of my attention and wanted to do all this stuff. And I knew that asking for something that the dog might know, like a sit or a down, um, would really amp up the situation. And so what I did is I transferred that boundary games that I had learned into the situation. And within three minutes, maybe, maybe less, I had that dog laying down in front of me, not moving. And the owner was just kind of looking at me in shock. Like, how did you take this crazy, um, I think it was a pit mix, who was all over the place, completely scatterbrained, who was suddenly giving me all of his attention and laying on the ground without any sort of leash or anything um, keeping him there other than himself. And that was the first time I used it with a client's dog. And I realized in that moment how powerful of something that I had because I found something that was a really quick win for an owner to go from a super crazy dog to a dog laying politely on the floor with somebody just walking into their house. And also something where I empowered the dog to go, hey, this lady's not all over me asking me to do a bunch of stuff. I'm not getting yelled at by my owner. I'm not... I'm not amping up because everybody's talking at me and I'm having to listen to, I can see somebody saying hi to Laura, hi Laura, um, for this dog amping up to becoming a potential problem and having a meltdown to simply understanding that I was going to give him attention if he laid on the floor. Um, and I didn't have a cot, I didn't have a boundary, it was just me. Um, so what that developed into is I suddenly realized that if I didn't ask for anything, but I took a situation with a new dog um, or a dog that I've worked with for even a long time and all of a sudden just brought the energy of the situation down and didn't ask for anything except paid when I got, you know, four paws on the floor in front of me first and then I send the dog away to alleviate the pressure and then they come back and I get a sit and I send the dog away by just tossing a piece of food and they come back and they sit in front of me and I alleviate pressure by throwing them away again and then they come back and they suddenly offer me a down because I'm not f feeding food as fast and then I'm sitting on the ground with them laying down in front of me and the dog suddenly goes, I would be trying to climb up your shirt mouthing you and getting so frustrated but suddenly you showed me that it's a lot easier for me to get attention if I just lay down. 
And that's when I realized how powerful of something that I had when I had a dog or multiple dogs at that point that instead of going in and having them leave holes in my shorts or people not paying attention to what they were doing with their dog, I was actually able to capture that dog's brain and go, look, all you have to do to get what you want is lay down without me asking. Um, and that's when it really started to become a protocol for me that this is the first thing that I do with every dog that I work with, whether they can completely get to me or it's in a shelter environment or a rescue environment or behind multiple layers of safety that I'm doing this protocol. Um, this protocol just bonds me with a dog in the sense that they realize they're in control of interacting with me without pressure. So the really great thing about this was in trying to explain it to owners, it became something where, and for anybody that's been in my classes, you'll have heard this speech a couple times before, that everybody goes to group classes or calls a trainer and they think what they want to hear is sit down, stay stuff and basic obedience. And I don't think I'm knocking obedience in any way, shape or form. It totally has its place. But all these people who haven't had the experience or education in how to train a dog, they think because it's what's popular that they need to be able to tell their dog what to do and that telling their dog to do something will help alleviate behavior problems. And it really comes down to those behavior problems don't get eliminated because somebody tells your dog to do something. They actually quite often get worse because the dog's then over threshold when you're verbally talking to them or asking them to do something and then they're conflicted about listening to you or doing the thing or paying attention to whatever they're paying attention to. And so behavior problems tend to escalate, owners get more upset and everything starts to melt down. And what I started telling to people was, what if you think you want sit down stay, but let's talk this out because do you really just want a dog who does something because you ask. Because if you have to tell your dog what to do because you have to be there to ask it, that means that you have to spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week, telling your dog what to do. And if you're not telling them what to do, they tend to get in trouble or have a meltdown because they don't know how to think for themselves. And the other thing that I tell people is think about it this way too. You go and you go to work and you come home and you have a very, well, maybe not during COVID, but you go and you have a busy life. You do a bunch of things throughout the day and you come home and you play with your puppy and then you go do the thing that you're going to do. And really most of the time for most people, the amount of time they spend with their dog is when they're feeding them, they're letting them out, they're playing a game you know, for however many cuddle minutes they have, and then they're off doing something, kind of ignoring their dog, and their dogs tend to learn that if they start doing the things that the owners don't like, that's when they get more attention. And so for owners, you actually have a dog who tends to be doing a really good job 99% of the day, but they're only getting extra attention from you when they're interrupting what they're doing, what you're doing to stop them from doing something. And I realized how powerful it would be to the, turn it around on the humans. Let's go, let's teach a dog what to do when you're not saying anything. So instead of saying, I want my dog to lay down and stay, let's go, I want my dog to know if I'm not asking for anything, they can be laying down and staying either in their spot or at my feet. And they can know in their brains that they're still working for me even though I haven't asked them to do anything. And we go from a dog who has a complete meltdown because they have nowhere to put all their brain energy and all the stress from not having an actual job, especially in pet, regular pet homes, to laying down is a job. Doing that, even though I'm not paying attention to you, him doing this is a job. Um, this is what he's supposed to be doing. I never asked, I'm not sure I might have asked him on camera if he wanted to hop up so that you guys could see him better. But I didn't have to ask him to go there. Before I started the camera, he was across the room on a different one. Um, and I don't have to ask him to do that. That's place work, yes. But what if we could transfer that to, I don't need a placemat to get this done, okay? So what it really became was, 
I want to teach your dog that in order to get something from you, they need to lay down. They don't need to lay down because you tell them to. They need to lay down basically as saying, hey, mom or dad, or hey, trainer, I want to do something with you. I want your attention. Wouldn't it be great that instead of a dog jumping up and pulling at your shirt or nipping or growling or even just crazy cute little puppies who won't settle or little sharks that won't settle, not sharks, but puppies with teeth, um, could suddenly realize that they could be in control of asking for attention or a need by simply laying down. Now, this worked a little different from kind of how I used to think about a down in the sense of I used to think of a down from a dog's perspective as a rather um, compromising position. So if they're stressed or unsure about a situation, laying down can make them more, well, smaller, so therefore more vulnerable. And sometimes it's kind of hard to convince a dog to do that. But what I found is the more you teach them that by laying down, you get access to things, the more they love offering lying down. The key to this is that this isn't about me asking for anything. This is about giving the dog a push button on a relationship to go, I want something. I want your attention. I want to go outside. I want to do, I want to play this game with you. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to see that new person. I want to, um, I'd like my food bowl, please. Right? So many owners have their dog sit and stay. What if you could just show them a food bowl and they'd go, yeah, I'd like that. I'm going to lay down. Um, so what this really became was giving a dog control of what they had access to. That was how I started this. So a dog really, really wanted my attention, but I wasn't going to pet them or talk to them or, um, any interact with them really in any way until I got a nice calm down in front of me. The only interaction I would give would be, um, throwing food across the room to at least give them a pressure release because like I said, a lot of times I do this with a lot of dogs that have um, really serious histories and I wanna make sure that I automatically have a pressure release, that there's no pressure to build up to go, hey, you must stay right in front of me. That's where it started. It started with me going, I needed a quick win for owners to look at it and go, wow, you just got my crazy dog to calm down. Or two, I needed a dog who was so used to so many, much input from an owner or other people working with them to go, she's not gonna make me do anything. I can make her stop. I can go away. I, I'm in control of this situation. And, and that's where the giving dogs a say part came from. Um, and what happened is the more that I taught this to each dog that I came across since I developed it, the more every dog generalized it, and now I've been teaching it for years, and it's become a healing superpower. The reason why I say that is because the dogs that have taken that one interaction to start and created it into an entire conversation. So I go from dogs having learning calmness in all situations. I go from dogs who spike up on their arousal and can suddenly tank their arousal back down because I turn it into a, hey, do you want to play fetch? If you want me to throw this ball a second time, what can you do to make me throw it? Oh, in order to make me throw it, if you lay down, I throw it. And suddenly laying down becomes um, the start of a game. And every time the dog wants something from me by laying down, they can go, yep, if I lay down right now, if I control myself, I will throw the ball. They'll throw the ball and I get to play again. They'll pick it back up. I don't throw balls as I realize I said that because I don't like what it does to their bodies, but it's an analogy. Go with it. Um, if I pick up a toy and they want me to play tug with it and I tug and then I get it and they accidentally let it go and I have it back to me and they lay back down. So I've got impulse control, arousal up, arousal down. I've got a permission based, a consent based. I have the ability to teach this dog that if you want to keep going, doing something fun or interacting with me in any way, that down is your magic. Yes, please. Then it became even more powerful because then I started using this on dogs who had um, serious aggression issues, touch sensitivities, trust concerns, um, 
resource guarding. I used, I've used i used it on literally the worst of the worst cases, and it's an a absolute game changer for them especially. But what it became is these dogs became so used to understanding if I lay down, I get what I want, I get paid in some way, so laying down became their favorite thing to do. Well, then I started unintentionally putting dogs or doing things with them that was a tiny bit too much pressure for that specific dog. A great example is trying to teach some new cues to a dog. And I have dogs with very low tolerance of frustration that the second that I started doing something, they would get overdone and start to get a little bit stressed just because I was asking for something different. And all of a sudden they would start laying down. And they realize that when they lay down, I always pay that. So every time that we got into a situation where they weren't sure whether I was teaching, I have one dog right now that uh, I'm working with that has an extreme aversion to harnesses. And when I started working this, even just me pulling out the harness, he'd lay down. And now we've worked on it and, and I go, okay, and I always pay the down so that it's never a choice between getting paid or being worried, okay? So they always get paid if they lay down. It gives them the chance to go, that makes me nervous or I don't understand what you're asking, I'm gonna lay down. As opposed to these dogs typically would have then turned into bite cases and in those similar scenarios, out of concern as to what a human was going to do or um, well-meaningly force on them, like just putting a harness on. Um, let's see, what else? Where I use it, um, actually the other really important piece of this is it became a complete and utter relationship saver for a lot of dogs because you had a lot of both owners and dogs who were worried about each other. The, the dogs were so overstimulated and stressed out by the owner well-meaningly putting a harness on or clipping a leash or introducing them to a new person. And the owner was so unaware of the typical responses that you see from dogs that um, the lip licking or the head turning or trying to leave, they just thought that the dog wasn't listening. And now all of a sudden you have dogs that are very clearly disengaging from something that would have made them nervous or upset. And it's a very clear line for an owner to go, oh, they laid down. They like went away and completely went down. Maybe they are trying to tell me something. And what it did is it gave the owners a very clear signal that I could explain that if they do that, you need to decrease your criteria. If you're trying to do something, what you're doing around them or with them is too hard and you either need to explain it better or break it into smaller pieces and teach it over time. From the dog's perspective, they started finally learning that people were gonna listen when they laid down. When they backed off and tried to remove themselves in a uh, polite manner really, as opposed to launching at you and you know <laughs> hugging them, hugging you with their mouth, as my friend Alex says, um, they suddenly went, I don't have to lunge and bark and growl. If I just lay down and remove it myself, I'm not removing myself from a payment, which may have been part of the stressor as to why the dog got involved in that situation in the first place. I'm still going to get paid, but the stress relief, go the stress pressure goes away because they don't do it again. And so the dog started tr trusting the owners more. The owners started paying better attention to their dogs and actually allowing their dogs to have a say in what was going on. And we had a completely different relationship be built just off of this one interaction set that didn't even require the owner to ask anything of the dog. Um, where I use it. So this is one of those things I've talked a lot in this, just I don't know how long I've been on here. No, 24 minutes, yay. Of all the difficult cases that I use this on. But this works on everything from a baby, baby puppy to old dogs. From super squishy, soft, I would never, you know, tell you I was uncomfortable dog to a dog that wants to, is so afraid, doesn't want to, but is so afraid, feels like they need to do something to defend themselves just by you maybe saying something to them. Um, and that's 
what's so amazing about this is it works for I have not found a dog that it has not worked for yet now that said I have had a dog or a few dogs that it has taken weeks to teach them just the very basics of this piece of you just lay down. I'm not asking you for anything. Um, I've worked with dogs that have been trained with force and trained with um, constant input, whether it's through force or just from verbal input, where they don't even know how to use their brains on their own. They only know how to respond to a cue. And those are the dogs that struggle the most with this because suddenly I'm doing something and I'm asking them to think through it without asking them for anything specific. Um, I've had one dog that at seven took me three, two, three weeks to actually teach this to because he was so amped up and so, oh, there's lots of, lots of things, um, was so hard for him to, to actually calm down and use his own brain and think the process through. And so, but yet that dog, once he picked it up, it became one of the most powerful things he knew how to do because he suddenly realized instead of being a bouncing terror because he wanted something and nobody was going to listen, he just had to lay down. And in that lying down when he was excited, instead of being 90 pounds all up in your face, and screaming and whining because you're not telling him what to do or because what you're asking is too hard, he would just lay down. Um, and that became a really important conversation piece for us. Um, puppies, I'm working with a 16-week-old uh, puppy right now, I think, that is really struggling with hugging with his teeth because he's so stressed out. And this is how I went about introducing myself. It's a very low pressured, I'm not specifically going to ask or make you do anything. I'm going to allow you to offer me this behavior. And when you do, I'm going to relieve the pressure. And if you want to offer it to me again, great. If you don't, that's cool too. Um, and now within a week, he's doing lots of happy downs. Um, I've got the puppies that are sharks that love to use their teeth, that use their teeth because they get so excited or over aroused or because they haven't been starting to use their brain and think things through that pick this up so quickly and the owners go, wait, my, my shark of a puppy can actually lay down and be nice and calm. Um, and those are the owner ones, right? So then we also look at, hi Ralph. Um, hi Raz, I love you too. Um, then we look at outside of just the owners. So, um, I do a lot of work with rescues and shelter type situations, and this is an absolute life-saving game changer because you suddenly go from a dog who is so overstimulated and has things being done to them constantly just with the stimulation from the environment. What are you doing, you little parrot? Um, that... If you start to teach them that they have more control by laying down, uh, then suddenly they feel more in control of their situation and they feel better about what's going on with them and what's being brought to their attention and worked on. Um, I've worked on this with, um, I'll use Lena because her mom wants me to, um, therapy dogs um, that haven't been taught to use their brain and suddenly you have um, one of my clients is a really large really fluffy really amazing mastiff that was young and didn't know how to use her brain and the second we taught her that if you lay down you get the things you want you get to interact with the people you want to see and you get to love on all these people laying down became the best thing ever which is really great for a mastiff who decides that pulling to the people that they want to see um is way more valuable than laying, than not until we taught this protocol when that's a lot of weight to control. And now you can take her around a bunch of kids, you can take her anywhere, and if you just wait her out, she'll just, okay, I'll just lay down. Um, from a rescue standpoint, this has been, um, a video just went around this week about how I muzzled the dog from a distance without having to um, actually interact or touch with him and some of the questions were well wait aren't dogs like this generally 
running away from you and trying to get away and trying to eat you before you can even start working on that protocol. Um, this is where that starts. That if I can teach a dog that interacting with me isn't scary, that it's valuable, then without pressure, then suddenly they want to do it. Suddenly they want to come up to me and say, hey, can we work together? Because you're not applying more pressure. Um, from a everyday standpoint, this becomes how my dogs get access to everything that they want. So a lot of times I'll hear trainers say, um, I am going to do the implementation right now and I will show you how to teach it if you would like, if I have time. Um, So from an everyday standpoint, the implementation of it, a lot of trainers will say, oh, your dog's not listening or your dog's struggling with making this decision or your dog's all over the place or growling or whatever. So in order for them to get what they want, for example, coming inside the house, you must make them, um, you must make them do something because you say so. So not only do they have to sit and wait outside, but you need to ask them to sit, spin, put two paws on something, and then they can come inside. And what I found is that dogs in those scenarios are amped up even more by that. And because all they're doing in their brains is constantly just waiting for you to tell them what to do so they can get what they want. And what this did was go, you're in control of what you want. And when you lay down, you're going to get to come inside. So from implementation standpoint, um, this becomes for me when I first teach it to a dog, their access to everything. So if they want to come out of a crate, if they want um, to play a game with me, if we're gonna walk through a gate to go outside, if we're gonna walk through another gate to come back inside, if they wanna see a person, if they want anything that they want outside of um, water, okay, basically, is, and obviously shelter, I'm not like keeping dogs away from stuff like that, um, is in their power to get by laying down. So I introduce the dog to that concept and very quickly they pick up, oh, all I have to do is lay down. And the second they lay down, they get what they want. Um, as far as the protocol itself, I will see uh, if you guys actually want to see what it looks like. Phyllis, you want to see how I do it. Um, okay. We will see if I can get him to do this on camera. I wasn't planning on doing a live demo, but Hey, that's what lives are for, right? Um, let me see if I can get you guys down to dog level enough and get him on the floor. Um, okay. Now, keep in mind, he knows this very, very well. Um, we have not done it in a little while, though. So, um, hold on. I'm having to move my iPad. We'll get somewhere. There we go. He has not done it in a little while, so I don't know how fast he will go through it. But that said, um, I could probably pull some toys out and see if I can get him to um, play that way. Let me lift you guys up just a little bit. Um, there we go. Look at that cute face. Look at that cute face. Uh... So let's say, think, are you in, if you're in PDT, I teach this the same way that they do boundary work, um, literally the same way. So when I introduce, um, and, and that's where this came from, um, and I proof it the same way also. So uh, I just use it as a boundary doesn't exist in all places. So it's just literally in front of me that this has to happen. Now he's been a little off his food this week too. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you want it? Oh, you do. So you can see he's offering that without me. So I would just throw the food away. Now, if I introduce this to a new dog, just nice coming up to me would get paid. And then I cook it, would throw the food away. Good boy. Yeah, thanks for coming up. 
And then, yes, good boy. Good boy. Ready? Get it. Yes, good boy. And this is really just how I do this. I don't do this with a verbal cue. None of this is cued. It's super, 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 super good bend. Important that this is not about doing it because you, your dog's not doing something because you say so. The value in this is your dog doing this because they think to do it. And so what you get is dogs with over arousal issues um, that suddenly recognize that thinking and choosing lying down in a situation get, where they might be stressed um, has value. And suddenly you get thinking and arousal very quickly. Ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You can see he's just coming back to me and laying down. There's nothing on my floor other than my floor. There's no markers. There's no things for him to come to. This is just him coming up and offering me. And again, I'm not asking for it. Get it? Um, I am just letting him do, do this down. Um, it's kind of hard for me to show. I don't know if he'll do it in a crate. I do the same thing with the crate door. If they're not willing to lie down, but they want to come out of the crate, the crate door doesn't open just like um, fine dining for my PDT friends. That's how I play my door games with my crates. Um, or what do they call it now? Airplane game. Um, with my crate doors, that's how I play. If they get up, I start to close it. If they stay down, I can open it and release. Oh, what you got? What you got? Thank you. Um, you can see he was going, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why aren't we working? Um, and I'll, I'll see if maybe I can get him to do it to the side here. Um, if I stop paying attention to him, you'll see him all of a sudden offer the behavior because he, he'll be like, wait, why aren't we working? Yeah, good boy. Um, and he'll do this. Get it. So we're still working on house manners, especially when I'm not around. But if I have like a giant pot of hot dog food that's super, super yummy, his options are to jump up on the table and to be a crazy, crazy dog. And instead he goes, oh, if I lay down, I get it. Um, the important, yes, you, the important piece is you can say, this is my brother's puppy. Yes. And he's cute. I know. Um, this is really important. So this is a dog that when we found him was terrified of life. Um, didn't want to eat kibble, didn't want to interact, didn't want to play any games. What you got for me? And thank you. And didn't really want to do, um, didn't even know how to interact with people. Um, Yes, I am working on a Mal right now that has something similar, uh, Phyllis, that this was an absolute, um, absolute game changer with him. It's the only way that um, I was able to capture his brain in the first place. Um, so I want to run down before I have to leave um, of the really important pieces here. And I know this is something really simple, right? I know this isn't something that nobody's new to a down. Nobody's new to place work. Um, nobody's new to those things, but really the protocol of this, this is it. This is how simple it is. It's literally just allowing the dog to recognize, like I'm ignoring him right now. I have food in my hand. He can either be mouthing me and going crazy pants like a crazy puppy would, or, and you'll watch him make the decision, I'm fiddling with my food. So he has the option to disengage. And you'll see as soon as, he might look up at me first, right? Like I said, we haven't worked on this in a little while. And you'll see him suddenly think through, I'm really making this hard, I'm really moving the food. And this is just what I do. I don't say anything, I don't do anything. Yeah, good boy. And there's the down. I'll prove it. Oh, you guys are backwards, so I'm having a hard time figuring out which way is which way for me. Right? So now he's down. And that's all on his. And you'll see this time that he comes back and does it with me fiddling the food, it should be a lot faster. Oh, are you ready? Now you're on top of the food. Yeah. Um, I proof it the same way as I would any other behavior. I wait them out. I let them do what they want to do. And I find it. You can get that. Um, I start adding. He is very cute. Thank you, Amanda. Um, I start adding duration and distractions. I teach this as though the, the laying down 
is its own boundary. So if you're working place work or if you're working anything like that, like the idea here is once they're down, they don't get to get up unless released. That's the goal here. So how this transfers into real life for me, once I use this, is this is completely uncued, right? So what's happening is the dog's learning that when, here you guys can watch him because I'm, well, or me, um, the dogs learn that they're in control of, come sit on the camera, not away from the camera. They want to see you, not me. Um, they learn that this behavior gets them everything they could possibly want or need, get it. And most importantly, what this teaches for these guys that are confused or concerned is they learn that laying down is their safety net. Not only is it the pathway forward to everything they might want, so I'll play this with a bunch of toys. Um, toy Switch, this is a great game that I em employ for my PDTs. When I play Toy Switch, in order, once they've learned it, in order to for me to throw the next toy, they lay down. So I've already got thinking and arousal when they're excited. I've got all of these pieces that building this foundation, are you saying hi by putting your face in the camera? That's cute of you. Building this foundation actually means that I take a puppy who used to not be able to cope with life who suddenly learns if he wants something instead of having a complete meltdown, all he has to do is lay down. And I have really a dog I can take almost anywhere once I work through the protocol, if they're comfortable with it, um, because they've learned that they only get things when they lay down and are released. And I don't have to say a word. That's the most important piece here. So instead of, I have dogs who, um, put in the wrong situation would choose biting based off of their history suddenly choose laying down because they realize they're biting because they're afraid but laying down gets them paid even if laying down isn't what I asked for so the pieces here what makes this so powerful is going from um, this being a completely non-cued behavior so absolutely utterly this has nothing to do with you asking them to do something this is just their own push button to I'm not saying anything to you we're not doing anything like he's waiting for me right now is she gonna pet me um, like I said we haven't worked on this in a bit this is where this comes in handy here I am on a live not paying him any attention he could scamper off go find something to chew on or you'll see him work through it here there we go there's my down um, and that is what this turns into so now I have dogs that when I'm out on a leash that used to lunge at other dogs or or even people, they'll, if they want to see the person, they lay down. And if, hi Jordan, um, and if they don't want to see the person, they can lie down. Um, I use this for telling people, hands off, if my dog lays down, that's him. Like, he doesn't need to be pet by you. He doesn't need anything unless he's asking for it. If they lay down out of excitement and you can tell they're vibrating to go do something, then they can be released. But they've learned instead of pulling you towards something or running up to you and having to feel pressure to be interacted with, especially like Malin was, um, because they tend to be a little bit more mouthy, that can be really dangerous if they're concerned versus this. I mean, he'll keep showing this to you guys all night if you want to watch it, that I just lay down. And the second that they lay down, they get what they want. Um, and so what they start to do is it takes all of, if you're in P, or if you're an absolute dog junkie like I am, you run through all the concepts literally with this one game. Um, so you teach the dogs to disengage, gets them what they want by lying down, not just stepping away from something, but completely lying down gives them um, what they're looking for. Get it? as opposed to coming forward and being all over the place. And it really does transfer in the sense that you see dogs start to apply it absolutely everywhere. What are you being so, do you like know you're on camera? You're being silly. Um, and as simple as this sounds, it has absolutely become, I think, the most powerful training tool that I have um, for all types of dogs. And I would say that over and over and over. This works for puppies. This works for um, adult dogs. This works great for adolescents who feel like they have all this energy and they need something to do with it. And then I've got dogs on the extreme level that um, would really bite badly um, with too much pressure. And by doing this and 
having it not be queued and always paid. So um, those are the two rules. You're, you don't ask for it and it is always paid when offered. Um, and that's what keeps it so strong. But always paying this, the dog knows they have an alternative option that won't be um, dealt with in a poor way. Um, and that really gives them the confidence to go, it's safe to interact with you or it's fun to interact with you because you won't just turn around and get mad at me for not doing something if I do this instead of what you're asking for. So you find it gives them that choice because you're not asking them to do it, which means that there's no verbal pressure coming from you. Their brain has to think of it themselves. Um, so you've got them starting to process and think about what they should be doing as opposed to just um, having their brain be all over the place. And it really creates a sense of trust that oftentimes isn't there. Okay, I think I'm done droning on about downs for a little while. Anybody have any questions? Um, looks like I answered everything. Um, okay, I got 15 minutes. Anybody want to see any other stuff? I don't know if he'll let me do it with toys, but um, how I would teach this from a protocol standpoint, um, this is just the basics. So I don't, um, here I'll move you guys back up so you don't have to look at the floor. Um, I, you know, it goes past this clearly, but, whoop, or not. That's just the introduction stage. Yes, Ralph, it does work. It's one of Raz's favorite things because she feels so safe when you do it. That's why we love rats. Um, I teach this with... Go find it. Go find it. It's out there. Go find it. Use your nose. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so the steps for teaching this. So it's just this very simple, um, absolute, go get it. And you're throwing a piece of food um, that the dog finds valuable away from you. And that's the very important part of the initial introduction because it's a pressure release every time. So the dog comes up to you, you pay. So uh, my PDTs, it's orientation and proximity. You throw the food away um, with a release cue, they come back and you wait it out. So you have, okay, now you're gonna offer me a sit. And then you have your next step. What did you ask for? Um, <laughs> Your next step is just waiting for that sit, is waiting for, my phone's catching up on comments. Um, and then you're throwing food away again. And then you're waiting for a down and you're throwing food away again. And then you are waiting for a down and paying in the down. So then you're paying multiple times from a down standpoint and then you're releasing once. And then you're starting to proof the walking around and really adding this into you um, just doing duration and distractions, okay, just like you would anything else. And then the caveat here, the way that this really, really hits home and the dog starts to generalize it and recognize how valuable it is for them. Um, <laughs> thank you, Laura. He is a fabulous little sidekick. He is cute. Um, the way that they generalize it is you start applying it as it is permission for access to everything that they want. Whether it is, um, I am going to go open a door to outside, whether they're going to get a piece of food, whether I'm going to open their crates, whether um, even sometimes even eliciting attention from me or petting from me all requires that they, in my opinion, or kind of what I call it is ask permission. And by asking permission, then they lay down. So they don't get what they want, no matter how spun up they might get, until they self-control and lay back down. And that has been an absolute game changer for the dogs that can't think once they get to that arousal level, they come back down and go, oh yeah, that down thing. And it really, the more you implement it in daily life, um, for the first down, do you jackpot it or just carry on and let the frequency take over as the motivator? 
That's a really good question, Alec. Uh, it totally depends on the case. So if it's taken a really long time for the dog to pick up that that's what I'm looking for, I will jackpot it. So I had the one dog that it took me two weeks to get him to lay down without asking. Um, and that was with some environmental help. Like he was up on a really high boundary like this and he still couldn't do it without me asking. I jackpotted the heck out of that. If I have a dog who's all sorts of in my face, um, like the, one of the first pity clients that I taught it to, I want them back and away from me as soon as possible. So I'm not jackpotting that. I'm relieving that pressure as fast as I can by getting them away. Um, the other really important part here is I'm not including very much enthusiasm when I start this. Um, this is very much meant to be a self-calming, self-controlled behavior that is self-thought of and self-put to use from the dog standpoint. So it has absolutely, my only job is to recognize it coming from the dog, recognize it as a communication and say, um, thank you for doing that. Now you can have access to what you want. So um, kind of going back to the jackpot, not when I introduce it, but when I introduce it in the sense of to a new dog, to the new full protocol in everyday life, the release is coming out of the crate or going through the door. Um, I do use a release cue to some, to every degree. Um, if I throw a piece of food, I always say get it and then I throw. If it's through a door or through um, a gate or a crate, those are all released. So they get the down, the second they get the down, then good, open the door. And then I start adding duration on top of that. And what happens, um, if you could see him now, he's frogging on the floor in front of me lying down because he knows um, he's a perfect example. This is a dog that was all over the place that now I can bring on live TV and um, I bring him on my clients all the time because he'll go lay in a corner even though I don't have a boundary or anything and even if he starts to get interested in what I'm doing because my other clients are making noise or something, he'll lay down next to me and be like, all right, what are we going to do? Um, I, so I go from treating it just like any other cue that I might train, but it's not cued. So really what the dogs start to realize is if you're not asking anything of me, if I lay down, I get your attention, I get paid, I get um, to do something. So we go from dogs who might be going and rummaging through trash or climbing all over arms or mouthing or barking as one of my favorite clients likes to love to do. Um, they suddenly go, oh yeah, I don't have to do these behaviors that my owner finds annoying. If I lay down, initially I get paid a lot. And then over time they learn that paying attention from a down will get them what they want. And it works really well for dogs who need a job because the amount of time that they spend thinking about what they're doing actually drains that brain energy so much that they actually get tired because they recognize that they have to maintain that down in order to get something. Um, let's see. So I go from treating it like a normal cue without a cue where I do a little bit of duration, a little bit of distraction. Um, and then I start going into with my duration and distraction, I go into actually trying to get them to get up without releasing them. So um, my PDT is the crazy lady game, the fairy game, um, things like that, where I am going, Hey, how are you? Or, you know, clapping my hands or jumping around or um, hands dancing or whatever it is to make them recognize that I, they didn't hear their release cue, they're supposed to stay down. Um, it's the same concept as if, if I were to ask them to down, I would expect them to hold that down unless released. This is the same thing, but they're having to do it themselves. Um, and then I start implementing it in higher value situations. So during play, um, if I have two toys and I do something with one toy and they bring it back to me in order for me to throw that second toy, then they have to lay down. Um, so whip it is a really important one where I do this for a lot of my dogs um, because it's so high value to chase something on a flirt pole um, that they recognize, oh, if she stops, if she flips it over, I got to lay down before she lets me run again. Um, 
and then I start taking it out and about. So before my dogs get to see new people or interact or do something, they actually have to choose a down. And from a real life standpoint, it creates, I just want to check time, um, a lot of calmness in the dogs because they recognize they're not now waiting for my input. They're not having to listen for what I say. And so when they might be overstimulated or unable to process what I'm saying, all of a sudden their kind of brain muscle memory kicks in and they go, oh yeah, I got it down. Once I down, I can do what I want or I can get out of the situation. Um, and it becomes a really powerful communication tool overall. Okay, any other questions? Um, if anybody's interested, I can and will try, I, I'll film a video or, or I'll post a couple of videos of it in action for dogs that, um, as I was training it to them, as they're figuring it out, um, I have one dog right now that will go from literally trying to eat me to laying down, um, once he thinks through for a second, like once I can break him in, in the moment, I can break his brain off onto hey, wait, what are we doing? Um, he'll literally go from trying to eat me to, oh yeah, and just lay down. Um, and it's a very, very important arousal concept in the sense of, and it's a huge safety concept, and I can't stress enough that from a rescue standpoint or a shelter standpoint, this is utterly invaluable um, because it gives them back a little bit of consent and choice and control. So one of the things that dogs and rescues struggle with so much is that dogs who are really loud and really um, kind of barrier reactive or hyper, they get overlooked because people find that, um, well, I don't, I love that. I'm attracted to that from a dog standpoint because I think it's fun um, and something to work on. But a lot of your typical owners, that makes them walk away. So if you start teaching the dogs that down to get them what they want, you start having calmer, happier, easier to interact with dogs. Okay, I think that's enough of me rambling on. I've got three minutes before I'm supposed to cut off, but um, if anybody is interested, let me know and I will post um, some of the videos of dogs learning how to kind of develop this. Hi, Crystal. Um, works with dogs too that are like, Crystal here has a deaf dog that um, learned this fabulously, had a really hard time disengaging from things and suddenly learned, oh yeah, if I lay down, I get what I want. Um, so it works, I, like I said, I, I haven't had a dog that this hasn't benefited um, and it's really worth giving it a shot and it really changes the concept of the more you ask for, the more you know your dog is listening or able to make choices or pay attention because I find that that amps them up so much more. Um, at times that by suddenly making the dog think through what they're doing and putting them in control that if you choose to do this, you have access or don't have to do something or anything like that, you suddenly have a much, much, much calmer and confident and trusting dog. Okay, I hope it wasn't too boring to listen to me ramble on about a down for an hour. Um, but if you'd like to see videos, let me know and maybe I'll try and post a couple in the group and if you guys have any questions feel free to instant message me on facebook instant message me private message me you can tell i'm back to aol again um i'm always happy to answer questions i'm always happy to help people walk through things um, i really truly absolutely believe that sharing information like this is the most important way to um, help as many animals and especially dogs um, that we can and I hope you all have a great night or morning because it's 3 a.m. for some of you. Um, bye guys.